welcome all of you to this evening's discussion about health care. This evening, we come together in recognition of a great medical leader and an outstanding humanitarian, the late Dr. Frank Bryant. He was a dynamic force in the San Antonio community, and especially in the African American community, and we're proud to honor his legacy with this lecture every year. Dr. Bryant believed in giving back to his community and that such giving was really the purpose and the privilege of the education he received. He graduated from the University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston in 1956, and he was only the third African American to receive a medical degree in Texas. He was the first African American intern and physician at the Robert B. Green Memorial Hospital, and after a few years in the Army, he opened up a family practice on the east side of San Antonio was known in those parts and in many parts of San Antonio as the father of medicine in San Antonio. And tonight we're especially honored to have with us his wife, Ms. Gloria Bryant. She's here with a number of members of her family. And Gloria, on behalf of all of us, we would very much like to thank you for the privilege you've allowed us to have in honoring Dr. Bryant's legacy. Would you stand so we could recognize you, please? Gloria Bryant. Now, events like this happen because of a lot of people contributing to them, and we are most grateful to the law firm of Fulbright and Jaworski for their generous sponsorship of the event. I'm pleased to welcome George Schofield, who's the managing partner of the firm, who is here tonight with many of his colleagues, many guests from the firm. For so many years, the firm has contributed in an extraordinary way to this community, and we're thankful. George, would you and your colleagues please stand so we could honor you. Thank you very much for doing this. You know, when this uh, event was planned in April, Dr. Bergren and I talked about this. We had thought that the health care bill would have been voted out by the committee and voted on by the entire Congress, signed by the president into law. And so this debate was planned as uh, more or less a postmortem on the health care bill. Well, as they say, timing is everything, and it turns out we're in the epicenter of this debate as we convene in mid-October mid to discuss this. We're privileged to have with us Dr. Ken Shine, the Executive Vice Chancellor for Health Affairs at the UT System, and all of our experts on the panel, Stuart Altman, Professor of National Health Policy at Brandeis, an economist fo focused on federal and state health policy from Massachusetts, David Hunt, the Chief Medical Officer in the Office of Health IT Adoption for the Office of the National Coordinator of Health Information Technology from Washington, Dr. Jeremy Lazarus, Speaker of the American Medical Association House of Delegates from Denver, and Anna Malino, Associate Professor of Pediatrics from Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, uh, and she will giving, be giving her perspective. So thanks to each of you for traveling uh, to San Antonio tonight to be part of this great event. So my last uh, official duty is to welcome to the podium Dr. Ruth Bergram, our direct, Bergren, our Director of Center for the Medical Humanities and Ethics. Ruth, with the support of Dr. Glenn Houff, the Interim Dean of the School of Medicine, and the Advisory Board and her staff has shaped the Center into a first-class organization, and this event, I know, will meet that standard. Please welcome Dr. Ruth Bergren. Thank you, Dr. Henrich. Quick housekeeping details. There will be a question and answer period at the end of the presentation. We've handed out note cards like this with your program. Please print your questions legibly um, and hand them along to the end of your row during the final presentation. And these will be collected by our student ushers and they'll bring them forward to me. Now your feedback is very important to us, so please complete this pink evaluation form and return it before you leave today. And finally, a requirement of continuing medical education with uh, our strict guidelines are that I must uh, make a verbal disclosure. Our moderator today, Dr. Ken Shine, has disclosed that he is a board member of United Health Group. And now I'd like to recognize the community partners that have made tonight's event possible. Um, this series was actually, although it's the Frank Bryant Lecture, it's the second in a series called Conversations About Ethics. 
and it was created in partnership with our friends at the Ecumenical Center for Religion and Health and Methodist Healthcare Ministries. On behalf of my colleagues there, let me say that we are all delighted to be on the planning team for this unique event through which we hope to further the dialogue about health reform in our community and our country. How we train doctors and shape their professional and personal codes of ethics is one of the most important considerations for health reform, one that is largely unaddressed by the congressional bills being considered. Over half of Americans are confused about what Congress is considering, and yet this legislation has been described as the most consequential social policy debate since the creation of Medicare 44 years ago. Health reform embodies the intersection between economics, politics, philosophy, and ethics. As such, it becomes critical for the medical profession to educate and nurture its students to be empathic and ethical health professionals as well as knowledgeable ones. And that is the role of the Center for Medical Humanities and Ethics, and tonight's an example of our many enrichment programs intended to fill this need. So I thank you very much for participating in this conversation about ethics. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Kenneth Shine. Dr. Shine is the Executive Vice Chancellor for Health Affairs at the University of Texas System. He was at the Institute of Medicine from 1992 to 2002. Under his leadership, that institute played an important and visible role in addressing key issues in medicine and healthcare. Its reports on quality, and patient safety heightened national awareness of these issues. Dr. Shine is a professor of medicine emeritus at UCLA School of Medicine, a cardiologist and physiologist. He received his MD from Harvard Medical School in 1961. Dr. Shine is the moderator for today's scholarship, credibility, and expertise of the group of panelists and their moderator is worthy of national attention at a time when confusion and discord reign across the nation whenever the topic of health care or health reform is addressed. Tonight, we hope to listen, to educate, and to shine a light of clarity on health reform that will resonate across the country. Please welcome Dr. Shine. Thank you, Dr. Bergren. It's entirely appropriate that this conversation about health reform be conducted by a center concerned about ethics. Over 35 years ago, at Almada, the nations of the developed world and many of developing nations concluded that health care was a right. The United States has never subscribed to that notion. And we still, as a country, uh, have not accepted the notion that health care is a right for every one of its citizens. Therein lies a substantial conundrum with regard to what and how we behave. The title of this panel is Health Care is Broken, How Do We Fix It? In your brochure, I call your attention to the bios of our uh, speakers and point out that Jim Rohack is in Washington working on health care reform. And we're very pleased that Jeremy Lazarus has replaced him. But I will not provide a lot of detail about the bios of each of our speakers in the interest of time and refer you to the uh, material. I also refer you to the other issues with regard to disclosures related to myself and, uh, and Dr. Altman, as well as the importance of uh, getting your CME credit. Is the American, is health care broken? The United States has the most expensive non-system of health care in the world. That non-system is associated not only with costs, which are almost twice the amount spent in other developing countries, but also with quality, which ranks us regularly in the high teens parameters that might be mentioned, whether it's life expectancy, infant mortality, a variety of other parameters, as a country, we don't do well. 
And as a matter of fact, even for our insured citizens, the work of Beth McGlynn and others has shown that only 55% of meetings between physician and patient result in optimal treatment for the patient. That is extraordinary in terms of the value of what we pay for. In Texas, 25% of our population is uninsured, and we rank 51st in the country in terms of that parameter. We recently made a lot of progress. For children, Arizona has more uninsured children than we do. It used to be we compared ourselves to Mississippi and Louisiana. And if you look at quality in Texas, only Louisiana and Mississippi, in fact, show lower quality parameters in spite of the fact that we have the number one cancer hospital in the country, the Texas Medical Center, great centers such as this. We also know that we have among the highest cost per capita of any state in the nation, and that we are a state of small businesses, only 37% of whom offer insurance to their employees. If that isn't broken, I don't know what is. You pay a lot, and on average, you're not getting very much in either access or quality. And so tonight's discussion is how do we fix it? And hope that rather than repetitions of the doom and gloom, that in fact we can look at some positive proposals.